2 Kings chapter 5. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, Gentiles, is a Gentile man. And we're not talking about the, the king of Syria. We're talking about a man who is in charge of the king of Syria's military. His captain was a great man with his master. So with the king, this man is outspoken. This man is great and honorable. He's great and he's honorable. He's respected. Because by him, here's the reason, the Lord Jehovah had given him deliverance unto Syria. Now look at that. We are looking at a Gentile, a Gentile nation. That God, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's why I said Jehovah in the Old Testament, is working with this Gentile, this dead dog, this nation. And the deliverance, the deliverance is by God himself. He was also a mighty man of value. So here's a man, he's great, he's he's honorable, he's valued, he's well respected, he's known by the king, he, probably his troops respect him, he's probably just a man. Hey, what can you say about him? People probably spoke about him. Maybe there were books written about him. He's in the Bible. How about that? And he's named in the Bible. So many people are not named. But he was a leper. Ooh. And as far as the law of the Jewish people, the leper was to be put out. He was to be quarantined. The law said of a leper, he's to be outside the city gate with his, with his fingers underneath his nose, crying, unclean, unclean, stay away from me. That's not so amongst the gent some Gentiles, I should say some. Some Gentiles, the guy was a leper, hey, you're a military leader, you're great, you're honorable, you be in my military. Well, couldn't leprosy spread? Yes. That guy's a great man. There's no quarantine. And leprosy, leper is a type of sin in the Bible. And the Syrians had gone out by companies into military campaign. And had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Oh, so what we're looking at Israel now, Israel is in rebellion. Israel's in sins. They got the sins of Jeroboam. They got the sins of Baal. They're, they're sacrificing every high hill. They're just doing everything to anger God. And God says to this Syrian army, the Syrian leader, go do some business for me. Go do Go spank them. Go pass judgment upon them. They're not doing right. I need somebody to go in there. So the Syrians go in there. And in their occupation, in the, the military campaign, a little maid comes out. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Now, there are many that speculate, and probably speculation is true, that this girl's parents would have been killed. Or she would have been dragged off away from her family. She's been taken away. We know that. From, from her family. From her home. From the land. She's become a captive. She's become an object of captivity. Now she is put in under Naaman's wife. She's put in a house with a Gentile. That's against the Jewish ways. Living the, the Jewish way, I mean, living the Gentile ways, which would anger Peter. She's put totally out of place and broken. And now she's a servant to a Gentile. Because her nation's wicked, Israel. And she said unto her mistress, and you find that mistress also with uh, Hagar, with Sarah, that word mistress. So it... In the Bible, a mistress says, hey, I am your servant girl. You are my master. And people hate those words, but they are in the Bible. Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Now look at that. 
her nation has been attacked by the Gentiles. She's been taken captive. You can assume that her family's dead. If not, they've been put into servitude. And this girl serving Naaman's wife one day turns to, to the wife or somebody there and says, you know what? Respectfully, your husband is a leper. Oh, there's a prophet in Israel that you can speak to and God will make him recover. God is able to recover that leprosy of your husband. Well, she, would, she should have anger. She should be upset. She should be, well, damn you, uh, Gentiles. Curse you, Syrian. You destructed my family. You destructed my house. You destructed my nation. And her, this little girl's attitude, you know, he can be cured by my God. G, capital G-O-D. My Lord there, she's speaking to the people of the house. She has respect to them. You got a lot of Baptists today, they have no respect for even their own authority. And she speaks out of the will of her God and the prophets of her God. Hey, you know, you can, you can get rid of that leprosy. But we are in the wrong area. We are not in the place where God can work. Now look at that. That verse 3 is the only thing she says. And she's not angry, she's not scorning, she's not sarcasm, and she has respect to the people who's taken her captive. Maybe Naaman's wife spoke to her. Maybe she heard Naaman's wife speaking about her poor husband with leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord. Now, we don't know if this is the king of Syria reading or Naaman himself. Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. That little Jewish girl, this is what she said. Now, never before Genesis 1, 2 Kings 4, 2 Kings 5, verse 12, has any, any leper person ever been healed. Been no leprosy people recorded to be healed. This little girl has never heard. Uh, Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 has been closed with dust gathering on those pages for the priest. No priest has opened up those two chapters. I know they're not chapters, but for us, no priest has opened up those, those, those pages, those rolls of leprosy, and to find... For someone who has been healed of leprosy and to bring the offerings for the for the healing. No, okay, the yellow hair, yep, you got leprosy, you're unclean, you go out. Yep, your house is straight, you got leprosy, go out. The healing of leprosy has not happened. But look at the faith this little girl has. Her nation has been destroyed by, by the heathen. Her nation is under the judgment of God. My God can help you. It's never happened before. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And he doesn't, this, this is what, what it's not even, uh, I'm trying to say is, we don't know if he said the exact words. You know, this girl said, if you go to Israel, you can be healed. Maybe that's what he said. And the king of Syria said, so it looks like they said to the Lord, verse 4, could be the king of Syria. Now, Naaman is under the king of Syria, and the king of Syria has such regard for Naaman that, all right, I hear this, let's go do it. I've heard this miracle cure, let's go do it. Let's go try it. The king of Syria is speaking out for Naaman. Naaman can be cured, let's go try it. Let's take the expenses, let's go. This is how honorable, this is how great, this is how respectable, this is how valued Naaman is. The words of this little girl that was under his wife, name his wife, let's go do it. How many people are going to listen to a little girl? Why would this nation listen to this little Hebrew Jewish girl? Hey, you guys are a bunch of losers. You're over here now. We conquered you. Why should we listen? What about your God? Really? Your God? Your God destroyed you guys. We won. Our gods are great. <coughs> And the king of Syria said, go. Go too. Go. 
Now that's an interesting word in the Bible. Go. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Go. Go. Go into Israel. Jesus said to Mount, go into the towns. Too many Christians stay. This Gentile king going to a nation that he just conquered. Think about it. To a God that let his people go into the enemy hands. And he's going. Let's go check it out. I mean, it'd be like saying, hey, I know this doctor. Yeah? He has no results at all. And his patients die. Let's go see him. The king, uh, the king of Syria said, go. To go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Now, this king is mentioned in chapter 3, verse 1, Jehoram. Let's go back to chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to go to another aspect that we looked at with Ahab. And Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria the 18th year, 666, of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord. That's not good. But not like his father and like his mother, for he had put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Ooh, that's bad. Nevertheless, the cleave, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. That's why the Syrians come in. They got to the point, God said, hey, I got to spank you. I got to do something. You're, you're misbehaving. I got to punish you. Hebrews chapter 12 or 13. All right, so here's the golden calves worship. And look what happens in chapter 5. That king of Israel is not mentioned by name. King of Israel. Sent the letter to king of Israel. When he came to the king of Israel. God doesn't even put his name in there. There is no name for the, for the wicked people that will not do what God tells them to do. Another way today to get your name known by God is you got to have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. They told Daniel, Daniel, know by name. Job, Daniel, and there's a third one mentioned. Are mentioned by names. God knew Abraham. God knew Moses, a friend face to face. Jeremiah. He doesn't know the king of Israel. God knows who he is. He's not mentioned. So he sent the letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. Hey, it ain't gonna come free. Nothing's free. You can take all the free things you want. It, it costs somebody else. And 6,000 pieces of gold. Man, he said silver and gold. And 10 changes of raiment. Now that's that's particular. Because that shows up with Samson, that, that raiment. And it shows up over and over. He gives Benjamin this big mess of food and more changes of raiment. I don't know if the climate over there ruins clothes. But this is an important deal that shows up. This changes the raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. So here's a letter to Je Jehoram. Now, when this letter is come to thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. All right, now we're going to see right now. When it says in verse 4, they said, thus and thus said the, the maid. She did not, they did not quote what she said. And we're going to see that right now. It's in the letter it says that thou mayest recover him. Let's look at verse 3, what, what the girl said. Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that's in Samaria. Those people that came to the king, they took out probably God and they definitely took out that prophet. So when the king hears the news, you mean the king of Israel can do this? All right, I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. When thou mayest recover, the king of, of uh, Syria is thinking the king of Israel can do it. They didn't quote what that girl said. So you got a letter is not going to do nothing. When the letter shows up to Jehoram, who's worshiping any god he can have, not worshiping the god of his, his fathers, I mean Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's in rebellion. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes 
and said, am I God? Well, no, you're not. That's true. To kill, to make alive. You see, that thou mayest recover. There's been a mistake of translating what the girl said. <laughs> the girl never said to my king. The girl said my prophet of God. And lied that this man would be the, the king writing the letter the sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. That man, this man is the king, does send unto me to recover a man, Naaman, of his leprosy. Wherefore consider. So here's a letter. That thou mayest recover this man of leprosy. I, oh, my God, I, I can't, I don't have no power over this. So by not quoting that girl, you could have caused a great tragedy of this story. And that's the importance when you you got to quote the scriptures, you got to quote, quote them correctly. All the damage you can do. I pray you and see how he has seeketh a quarrel against me. Now what he's thinking is, Larry, if you don't heal my servant, there's trouble. There's problems. And there would be. Because the king of Israel, especially under the condition uh, that he is and his gods, he can't do nothing about Naaman. And thus, the king of Assyria, uh, king of Assyria would be angry. Now, why didn't Jehoram, in, in verse 7, why didn't he call on his, his cow gods? Oh, mighty buffalo, oh, mighty milk chop, mighty beef, my hamburger, whatever my God's name is. Why can't you help it? Because they can't do nothing. You know, the prophets that, that spoke of his father said, oh, king, go and go, and you're going to have great victory with these golden, I mean, with, with, these, with, with these horns. Even he didn't believe, believe his own prophets. He said, hey, listen, you go into battle with Jehoshaphat, I'll change my clothes. They got a religion that they don't even believe in. There is no eternalness. There is no security in their gods. And it shows. So now we got a quarrel. We got a problem because I can't do it. I don't have no miracle cure. I don't have no snake oil. I have nothing for leprosy. And we're going to see in a moment. The great thing is leprosy is in my city. I can't do nothing with them. What gives this Gentile... This enemy of us, what gives him the right to send that letter to me? And, and name is standing right there. This is like um, Uriah. Joab, yes, sir. I got a letter from King David. Whoa. Jehoram, or king of Israel, yes, I got a letter here from my king. Whoa. One letter says kill him. One letter says heal him. Whoa. And it was so when Elijah, the man of God, there he is, there's the one that the girl was speaking about, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. So speaking to your children like the Bible says about the Bible and about God and his people, that little girl of uh, the entire nation had the answer. Elijah could do it. Now she didn't mention, maybe she didn't know his name. I don't know. Maybe she's speaking about the other prophet. But here's Elisha. Had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying. Now remember, Elijah would not be friendly with King Jehoram like he was not friendly with Ahab. Ahab and Elijah show my enemy. Elisha is representing the God of Jerusalem. The God of the, the Judah. The God of heaven. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehoram. Fallen gods. They did not get together. They did not enjoy each other's company. So he gets another letter. He gets another news from Elijah shows up. Now Jehoram's got to be like. How did he know I rent my clothes? How did he know I had this attitude? This God. And when we run back to verse 1 again. The Lord is working with the king of Syria. The Lord is working with Naaman. The Lord knows about that little girl speaking up. The Lord knows that they mis misapplied that girl's. And Lord says, all right, Elijah, you got to step in. You got to fix this mess they got themselves into. And all the mess that we get into. 
when we don't tell people the truth. The mess we get into when we lie. And that's the dangers of lie. Because kids are going to grow up and think, oh, Santa Claus, will, Santa Claus will bring me to heaven. The Easter Bunny will take care of me. The Tooth Fairy will pay my bills. And that's all lies. And then when you grow up to tell them about the truth about Jesus Christ, well, Santa was a lie. The Easter Bunny was a lie. The Tooth Fairy is a lie. Maybe your Jesus is a lie. Got to be careful. He rent his clothes, he said unto the king, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. Now, see, Elijah knew. Let him, let Naaman come over here. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And ain't you, king? What did that girl say? That girl said, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet. What's Elijah stepping? He says, I'm that prophet. I'm the one that girl was talking about. So when Naaman goes back and he goes home and wraps his arms around his wife and says, hey, look at this, and refresh, and they bring that little girl, and that little girl say, this is what I said. And when she would mention, I knew that prophet would do it. Now Naaman knows, I know that prophet's name, Elisha. What about my king? That guy was a loser. That guy couldn't, do, all he did is rip his clothes in front of me. Like, that did me a lot of good. That guy didn't have enough sense to call Elijah. Elijah had to bring people to his to his room, to his throne. That king of Israel got little girl. That guy's a wimp. That guy is wrong. That guy is, is I got the God, and we're going to learn that name is going to turn to the God of Israel. Not the king of Israel. That guy stays in his foolishness and his wickedness. So when he goes home and wraps his arms around his wife and they, and they start talking with that little girl because that little girl is under name his wife. And they're going to say, that prophet. Elijah says, I'm that prophet. They should know that there is a prophet in Israel. You wouldn't think there was. You know, you may think that there are a wicked church out there and that church may be one person is doing right. One person is doing what God, he might be going against the flow. He might be going against the, the thing of that church. And they may be worldly and carnal. There may be one person in that church doing right. I've been in that aspect. And they're not happy about that one person. Oh, my 450 prophets. Oh, you're so great. You're so wonderful. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, let's find a prophet of God. Oh, I hate him. That guy has nothing good to say. You see what that guy is, Camel? That Camel's got bumper stickers. Oh, I'm just so sick of that guy. Shut that guy up. Get him out of here. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. So here he is. Elijah didn't even have the nerve to go to the king. <laughs> I ain't going to that house. I am not going. I am not having fellowship with that guy. That guy's wicked, and you ought to learn that from the Bible. You ought not have no fellowship with Billy, uh, no, no one who's unrighteous. I'm not going over there. Something might jump on me. That's Bible doctrine. It's called separation. And Elijah sent a messenger. <laughs> Naaman's at his house. Here's his chariot. Here's his horses. They're snorting. They're at that door. Now comes the door. All right. Is that him? It's a messenger. Unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan. That's a muddy river. That's a mighty strong river. That's a river that flows. That's a river that's angry at harvest time. That's a river that floods its way. Go wash in the Jordan. You mean, Elijah, you're not going to come out? Seven times. Why seven? I don't know. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Go in the Jordan River, dunk yourself seven times, leprosy's gone. But Naaman was wroth. Why? There's your cure. You know? Here, Mr. Hayward, here's your prescription. Take this down to the pharmacy and have them fill, and that will that will take care of your ear. Really? really? You're not going to have this kind of healing service? You're not going to put your hands on me? We're not going to do you know, all this kind of stuff? you got to make me go down to the pharmacy and get a prescription? Name was Roth and went away and said, Behold, I thought, that's the problem, what we think. Our problem is when we think. Thoughts don't come from the heart. They come from that stupid brain of ours. 
He will surely come out to me. He didn't. Remember, he sent a messenger. So evidently, they knew who Elijah was somehow because he knew that wasn't Elijah that came out the door. And stand and call upon the name of the, look at that, look at that, look at that. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. His God. We got a problem there. And strike his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. I thought he was going to lay hands on me, swing his jacket. We're all going to sing a hallelujah chorus. We're just going to rise and do the wave. And everybody's going to be there. There's going to be a healing line. And oh, I can just be on national television, though there's no television right now. Just look at Naaman. Look how great he has been healed his leprosy. Let's give him a clap. Oh, hell, Naaman. That's what he wanted. He wanted a healing show service. And he was he was ha he was not happy. He was raw. First of all, God wasn't his God yet. And there are three types of people that go to healing services. There are people who go there. I just want to be healed. I don't care who does it. I want to be healed. That's not their God. That's the preacher's God. There are people who go there. Well, it's it's the preacher's God. I want to be healed. Who cares? And there are people who go to healing service and they they love the Lord. They got faith in the Lord and, and they just really, but that guy's a phony. And then they turn away, walk away with faith against God because that guy was a phony. He wanted a healing show. And strike his hand over the place. Or everywhere there's leprosy. He wanted, he wanted hands to be laid on him. See that? That's that's what they do in the healing lines. One guy throws his jacket, knocks you over because he probably hasn't washed it. One guy smacks you in the forehead. There's all kinds of ways. That's not what Elijah was of. That's not the God of the Bible. Are not Abna and Parfar. -far. I love that. Parfar. -par. What city do you live in? Parfar. Parfar. -par. -par. I just like that word. Rivers in Damascus. So what's wrong with Damascus? What's wrong with my hometown rivers? What's the, that, where that fishing place I go? What's wrong with the, you know, that beautiful rivers that way? Aren't those rivers? That Jordan River, it's muddy. It's wild. It's wicked. It just, I might get, I might get washed away. Jordan River. Really? All the rivers. Better than all the waters of Israel? How about the Sea of Galilee? Pretty soon Jesus would be by that sea. No. The Holy Land waters. No. God already told you through Elijah. The Jordan. And you're upset. Oh, I, I, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted God to do. Oh, it's, no, it's not anything else better. It's what God says. That's what Eve had a problem. Oh, I can have all the fruits in the garden, but that one. I can, I can always imagine, picture that. I wonder if it just had two fruits on it. So she picked the fruit and gave it to her husband. I wonder if that tree only had two fruits. And meanwhile, you turn around, there's a banana tree with all, I mean, I don't know how many bananas they have in a the cluster. There's an apple tree with all kinds of apples on it. Man, grapes have all kinds of grapes on it and peaches, all kinds. I mean, that tree, I just bet you it just had two fruits on it, if you would if, ask my opinion. Isn't it just two rivers? Isn't that my two hometown rivers? These two rivers that I know, aren't those even better than the Jordan? Can I have a hometown religion? Can I have the, the thing that my parents grew up in? Can I have a religion? No, you can't. That won't work. If I wash it, then be clean. No, that's, what, that's not what God says. So he returned and went away in a rage. That's the first time rage shows up in the Bible. This guy is raw. He is angry. Why? I don't get the water I want. So you have religions out there that are troubling with salvation because baptism. Here it is. This is going to be a baptism. Why can't I be holy water? Well, what do you mean? You know, I'm sprinkled. You say immersed and all that. Or I, you know, I, 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 already in the Old Testament. No Christ, no gospel, no death, no burial, no resurrection. We got one guy having trouble with baptism. 
no faith. I want my river. And a lot of people say, I want my religion. Won't do. And his servants came near. Thank God for these servants. You just don't walk up to the master of your, your command. There are channels. His servants came near and spank unto him, saying, My father, that's a title of respect. But isn't it funny how we get my father in connection with baptism? Oh. <laughs> but that's respect. That's this guy has trained his troops. He has taken the fatherly figure of these young men that I'm going to teach you everything I know about warfare. That's what they would have done in Syria. Takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to train the men, especially as fierce as the Syrians are. If the prophet, now look at that, the prophet, not the king, not the messenger, he overshot the messenger, goes, if the prophet had bid thee do, do some great thing, stand on your toes, wipe you on the head, what would you want, Naaman? What kind of show did you want? If he had done you that great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? Come on, Naaman, I know you. If he had told you something else, just like you're acting right now, you would not have done it. Because you're not doing it now. This guy has got some character to walk up to his boss and say, you're disobedient, sir. I'll probably do KP for the rest of my life or even get killed for what I'm doing. These people like Naaman, walking, uh, Naaman and his soldier and um, uh, Nathan walking up to David saying, thou art the man. And Elijah walking up to the king says, I ain't your enemy. You're the enemy. You don't just do that to these kings and rulers. They have a sword by their side, and they would use them. So you're seeing the mercy of grace working in this, this servant. God is holding back. Listen, remember I said wrath and rage? You don't walk up to your leader and tell him he's wrong when he's in wrath and rage. Like God told Laban, hey, when you meet Jacob, you better calm down. You better not even say anything to him wrong or right. And like God working with Naaman in that dream with, that dream with, with uh, Jacob, God is working with Naaman right now because this, this is all to God's glory, verse 1. Verse 11, Jehovah. God is working behind the scenes that no one sees. Even for me to learn that God may give that red light that I don't like. He may be preventing me from an accident that I don't think I'm about. He's angry. He's wrath. How much rather than when he says to thee, and he didn't say it, a messenger came out, wash and be clean. Now, look at the simplicity that his servants brought this message to. Oh, Jordan River. Oh, seven times. There's another. Sir, yes. All he wanted to do is just wash and be clean in the Jordan River. That's what he wanted. Look at the simplicity. And look what happened. Then went he down and dipped himself. Look at that. Immersion. He didn't grab no water, splash it on his face. He went down in the river of Jordan. And he dipped himself. He went under and came back up. Seven times in the Jordan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He is soaking wet. His servant didn't spray him. No one came along and squirted him. According to the saying of the man of God. So he's finally done what, the, what God's told him to do. And his flesh came again. Like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Look how clean he was. Look, look. Oh, wow. You can just imagine this. <laughs> look at this guy. Wow, look what God did. Whoa. You see like, that? No, no scars even. Look at that. No scars, man. You see where that was rash? That was, remember that Remember that rash right there? Remember how ugly that thing? Wow, look at that. Woohoo! Baby skin. Wait till I show my wife. I probably, let me look at my butt. I got a little baby's butt back there. Look, look at him. And we're going to stop right there, but we're going to one more place. We're going we're gonna to leave Naaman. He's been cleansed. He, he's got pure, clean skin. 
And the story follows. I mean, it's just great. It gets better and better. But Luke chapter 4. Let's end on a terrible note. Oh, what? Luke chapter 4. How can, it get, how can it get terrible? I mean, the guy's happy. He's going to turn to God. Luke 4, verse 27. And we're going to learn another thing that we did not read in Kings. Luke 4, 27. And there were many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah. That's Elijah. Greek. So Naaman was not the only leper in Israel. Naaman's not the only leper in Syria. There are plenty of le listen, when Jesus came, there are leprosy in Israel. Leprosy is that shine that sign in the law that says your nation's not doing right. With leprosy, the Syrians came and conquered Israel because they were doing wrong. The blindness. The, the, the hands being crimped and the devils and the blind and the, the leprosy is you're not living right. That is the result of living against God. That's the condition of Israel. Jesus said there were many lepers there. All right, we're done. We're done. Okay. No, we're not done. So when we read Second Kings... And we read about this Gentile, 2 Kings 5. We learn by Jesus there were all kinds of lepers. In Israel, Jewish people, lepers. 2 Kings 5 talked about a Gentile. The prophet. You notice how he put the prophet. What did that girl say? The prophet. Jesus quotes from that girl exactly how she said. So you go scripture with scripture, what that girl said, and what Jesus said, and what that girl said, and what Jesus said, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed. Oh, oh. There was no healing of leprosy. Where did that girl get the idea that God's able to heal Naaman? When Jesus says, how many years later? There was no one ever healed of leprosy. Saving Naaman the Syrian. Now notice that word saving, because we're going to look at name and Lord willing another night. That man got right with God, and I guarantee you, his name is the Lamb's Book of Life. He may show up in the Great White Throne Judgment, but he's not going to go in the Lake of Fire, I believe. I believe he's going to be, hey, your name's here. Whoso was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life was cast in the Lake of Fire. Oh, I see Naaman the Syrian. I even find his name in the Bible. Saving Naaman. And all they in the synagogue, that's Jewish. That's a Jewish group of people. Jesus is in a group of people, a group of Jews, and he just mentioned a Gentile. You want to know how angry they get? Go ask Jonah and Peter. Peter, I want you to go to a Gentile. <laughs> Not me, Lord. Jonah, I want you to go to the Gentile. Uh, they're on the east. I'm going far as west as I can. Now, Jesus just told a congregation of Jews, there were all kinds of lepers in Israel. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, our, oh, yeah, probably one of our family. And the only one that was cleansed, the only one that was saved was Naaman the Syrian. <clears throat> Dare you mention that? Gentiles, mention that here. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Just like... <laughs> Naaman was before he got right with God. Now, why are they filled with wrath? He just mentioned two stories about Gentiles. One with who? Elijah. And the other one with who? Elias. Elisha. <laughs> and what we just read. There was that Gentile widow that, that, that took care of Elijah. Now, let's, let's get the double portion. Let's get the double portion of Elisha. All right, that widow woman took care of him. That, that meal never ended. That oil never went out. I don't know if they checked at 3 o'clock in the morning to see how whatever God did. But they could eat and die. I'll match that with Elijah, that double portion. Name me one man before Elijah, before Second Kings. Name me one man that was healed of leprosy. I'm waiting. And think about all those Jews that had leprosy. and Not one man was, was healed of those leprosy. 
But Naaman, the Gentile, the Syrian, see that? The Syrian. That's your enemy. And all they in the synagogue were heard these things were filled with wrath. How raffle. <laughs> How raffle. That's not a word to mention with church. Raffle. And rose up. They stood up. For the closing hymn. Everybody rise. 238. And thrust him out of the city. This is the city where Jesus grew up in. That's that little boy would help me with the water. That's that little boy. Oh, man, he's just so I wish I had that little boy as my son. Man, Mary's got a wonderful son there. And then the rest of her children. Oh, don't say that. The rest of her children are but devils, but not that. Jesus. Wow. That, thrust him out the city and led him unto the brow of the hill. It's an edge of a hill. It's a steep place. Whereon their city was built. That they might cast him down. They're going to kill Jesus. They're going to push him off the ledge. By the man that we're reading about today. In 2nd second, second King. I almost said Samuel. And we're going to come back. Lord willing. We're going to see this man. He's just going to get right. He's going to serve the Lord. And we're going to learn. I want you to keep that in mind. I don't know if we're going to read it again, but Naaman's going to be allowed to serve God. Now get this. We can't get into it tonight. He's going to be allowed to serve God, Jehovah, in a false God worship place. Boy, those Jews hated Jesus for that. 